Understanding the OEL and OEB in the pharmaceuticals is important and it is required for every pharmaceutical professional and the employees who are working in the pharmaceutical industry. This topic is related to the exposure of the chemical substances, exposure of the pharmaceuticals to the people who are working in the industry, who are working on to these APIs, formulations and chemicals. I welcome all the viewers to this topic on OEL and OEB. OEL and OEB, these are the related terminologies. OEL and OEB are required to be understood for every employee who is working onto these chemicals. OEB is Occupational Exposure Band that is OEB and OEL is Occupational Exposure Limit. Understand that OEL and OEB are interrelated to each other. OEB is a classification system for the APIs and chemicals based on their toxicity, potency and the occupational exposure limits. See the area in the pharmaceutical industry where these chemicals are handled, processed or where the drug are handled, processed and also where the formulations are manufactured. These areas are required to be safe for the employees. There should not be more exposure of these APIs and chemicals to the people who are working at that place. So for the safety of the personnel and also safety for the environment and for the regulatory compliance, the OEL and OEB is must to be understood. OEB and OEL limits are there for the chemicals and drugs. And based on these OEB and OEL levels, the personal protective equipment use, containment level and the engineering controls are needed during the handling of drugs, chemicals and the pharmaceuticals. The employees generally work for 8 hours in the manufacturing area or processing area or in the area where these chemicals and drugs are handled. So there should not be the more exposure of these chemicals and drugs to these personnel. So depending on to the potency toxicity and the exposure level, the chemicals are provided with the OEB band and OEL limit. So what is the purpose of OEB classification? OEB classification protects the pharmaceutical workers and employees from exposure to hazardous chemicals, drugs and compounds. OEB classification ensures appropriate facility design and operational controls are in place. It also helps to align with the regulatory expectations and the GMP standards. So not only for the safety of the personnel, but it is required for the environmental safety. It is also required for the regulatory compliance. There are certain rules which are related to the handling of the hazardous chemical substances and every industry and organization has to comply to those critical safety requirements because unnecessary or uncontrolled exposure of these hazardous chemical substances will impact to the health of personnel and also will lead to environmental hazards and non-compliance. Now see the OEL limit 
or exposure limit and the oeb bands so oel limit is the limit given in microgram per meter square and depending on the oel the oeb bands are provided so oeb1 is you can consider as most safe and oeb5 is most dangerous for the exposure because in oeb1 the oel range is higher while the oeb5 is with the very narrow or very stringent control limits oeb1 the exposure range is more than 1000 microgram per meter cube the potency or toxicity of these chemicals is low and the examples are like lactose and ibuprofen many examples you can find and you can consider oeb level 2 in this the oel exposure range is 100 to 1000 microgram per meter cube the toxicity or potency is moderate example is made for me oeb3 now the potency is increasing toxicity is increasing as the band is number is increasing oeb3 10 to 100 microgram per meter cube it is potent compound like carbamazepine oeb4 1 microgram to 10 microgram it is highly potent many of the cytotoxic drugs anti cancer drugs and the hormonal drugs fall into category of oeb4 oeb5 it is the most potent and toxic type of band and in this the exposure limit is less than 1 microgram per meter cube so extremely potent compounds fall into this category many of the toxic oncology apis cytotoxic drugs hormones and some other type of chemical compounds come in this category now depending on the oeb level the controls are required to be in place oeb1 basic hygienic measurements are there as a requirement oeb2 some engineering controls are required like dust collectors use of uh, pp's personal protective equipments mask gloves and uh, protection for the eyes then oeb3 it requires enhanced pro personal protective equipments and containment system should be there oeb4 this requires advanced containment system so that the exposure of dust is controlled at a very low level every equipment should have isolators along with the pp's and basic requirements oeb5 it requires full isolation pressure suit use of pressure suit by the employees working in these areas so oeb5 requires all the required controls oeb4 and 5 are the high risk compounds special requirements are there for oeb4 and 5 the closed handling systems are required like isolators then dedicated hvac and equipments segregated and pressurized rooms so that the contamination is controlled and the dust exposure or the exposure of the chemical substances to the personnel working in that area is controlled advanced decontamination and waste disposal systems are required to protect the environment routine air and surface monitoring is must regulatory compliance requirements so oeb practices align with the osha that is occupational safety and health administration ichq9 quality risk management gmp good manufacturing practices and isp baseline guidelines benefits for implementation of the oeb 
so oev is not a choice it is must and it is required for the enhanced worker safety for reducing the cross contamination for the improved regulatory compliance and also handling the high potent apis and oncology drugs it supports sustainable manufacturing practices in summary oev classification is crucial for managing the pharmaceutical hazards higher oev level require advanced control and strict protocols it is essential for the regulatory compliance and for safe handling of the high potent apis by the personnel also whenever the highly potent apis are handled proper training for use of pps proper training for the handling of these chemical substances is required to be given to the employees also sops should be there for the handling and disposal of the waste always have a understanding about proper disposal of these hazardous chemical substances all the pps after use are required to be cleaned properly or the disposable pps are required to be disposed properly many of the times the potent chemicals are required to be disposed with a standard operating procedure so that the chemical will not go into the environment deactivation procedures are required and the proper training is given to the personnels so this video is regarding the oeb and oel terminology for the pharmaceuticals thank you for watching the video